Hello to everyone, welcome to a new podcast of meditation, falling into the arms of God, the Therese of Avila. This is your pastor, Yeti. Today I'm going to talk about the return. A soul can perform many acts to confirm its resolution to serve God and to awaken love in itself. In moments of awakening, we are given the eyes of God with which to see the other, grander reality of our lives. These moments are also invitations to return to God and to ourselves. The original meaning of the word religion was to return. And by this act of returning, we reignite the divine spark that resides within. According to Teresa, in this second dwelling, we must become active and help God to light the fire of love within our hearts. We must commit to our spiritual journey and spend time building our relationship with the inner divine self. In so doing, we will also meet again and again the voice of our ego. Teresa tells us how to discern the voices we hear, enable us to have confidence in knowing the voice of God and allaying our doubt and confusion. So she talks about my time, even when we are engaged in our worldly pastimes, business and pleasures and huggling. This God of ours is so anxious that we should desire him and strive after his companionship that he calls us ceaselessly, time after time, to approach him. And this voice of his is so sweet. Entering the castle requires a commitment, and as Teresa believed, we need to make an effort to remain within its walls. Upon returning the castle and moving closer to where God resides, our inner hearing becomes more attuned to his voice. He is a very good neighbor, said Teresa, one who is very generous with his love and who never tires of calling us to come closer. Even through the noise and commotion of our daily life, God is committed to us to the purity of a loving relationship. Are we committed to do the same? Teresa believed that desire to commit to commit is essential, enabling this relationship to grow and facilitating our ability to know and love ourselves. We must create <clears throat> the sacred time and space to be fully present with ourselves and with God. In this way, we can be open to the inner workings of our soul and we can develop a more astute ability to hear God speaking in us and through us. With our very busy lives, 
it may sometimes seem impossible to have such a luxury as time for ourselves. And when time does become available, it is very often accompanied by sheer exhaustion from the day's activities. However, Teresa was not asking us to fit God into our schedule. She was telling us to make this relationship a priority. This relationship is the very cornerstone of our life. Often we are too busy doing our life rather than cultivating the being that we are. Her voice is so sweet, wrote Teresa. Have we heard the sweetness and felt the gentleness that this great love brings? Or have we rushed by it in our attempts to have a few minutes to ourselves at the end of the day? God is extremely patient and will wait for us. You do not need to rush anywhere or by anything. Just come as you are, even in your frazzled state. But be committed to spending time. Be committed to coming openly and honestly as you would do to a dear friend. Create a time in the day or evening, even just five or ten minutes, that is just for you, your divine self. You will come to enjoy these private and sacred moments, and they will naturally grow longer. This is a commitment to you, to coming to know yourself in ways previously unexplored. See it as a soulful adventure, an exploration into the wonder of what it is to be a human being on this earth. This is not something you have to do to improve your life. There is no aim, only a commitment to be exactly who you are. This is the richness of in entering the castle. Teresa led an extraordinary busy life as founder of the new Carmelite Order. She dealt with financial and administrative duties, oversaw daily monastic activities, gave spiritual counseling, and wrote prolifically. She complained about the volume of her duties, and she desired to be left alone to a prayer time. This was the most precious thing for her. Without it, she said she would have been unable to achieve anything. Commit yourself to God, she said, and your life will naturally unfold. Now find yourself in a quiet moment, and again, this needs to be in your time, not in my time, because I don't know where you are. So be committed to yourself and see what will happen over time. We know that our life is busy. Even in a not busy life, there is still a lot to do. That's my experience. I see people doing a lot. I see people doing less and still for them the days are too short. Or, you know, fill it in by yourself. Find a quiet place. Create a sacred and quiet place. Let yourself be guided into your inner castle and feel the ease and peace to be had there. See yourself exactly as you are. Do not judge or change anything. Allow yourself to be. Commit to that self. Ask that you may hear the sweetness of God's voice. Let it radiate through your whole being. Commit to that voice. My dear ones, it is so important to be committed to ourselves. 
Sometimes it's just the reverse. We are committed to so many other things, to so many other people. But for us, it is very important to have that discipline, to also be committed to yourself, to give you time to ease your life for yourself. And in your relationship with God, that you fulfill your desire and God's desire to be with each other. May God bless you and protect you. I wish you a wonderful day and God bless. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye-bye.